If you play it right for yourself, it can be the most remarkable thing. But as a collective, these very early days are super important. This is inevitable at scale. This is, watching this makes me laugh because this is exactly what the rooms look at. This is actually way more. This is more, even though it's just, these days for me, a small room. You know, this is way more faces than the ones that I saw in the tech space. And a lot of these faces went on to become the founders of Uber and Zucks and the founders of Instagram and things of that nature. So, a couple things. Number one, in 2006 and seven, when I went to South by Southwest, people were there to be part of tech for the sake of tech, to change the world. The, the, the aspirations and the ideology were remarkable. The far majority of this room today, 2018, right here, together, is in it for it. They've been in it. They're not flying in from Wall Street or Silicon Valley. There's people in here. There's people in here, but the majority of this room is in it. Now, this is super important. As I hear that wonderful thank you and I get it and I respect that, this is a very important conversation, I'll tell you why. The OGs in this room that have been through it, that have been, you know, <laughs> it's funny, I was spending some time and looking at an article being rated and I was telling some of the people on my team who don't even hear this story, the amount of times the ABC came to Wine Library because I was navigating and doing things early that nobody ever did before and when you're biggest, you get picked on because you can pay the fine. Don't get it twisted, it's very simple. It's called winner's tax. They don't tell you that at B school, but that's what it is. I'll I'll say it this way, it's unfortunate for me, unlike when I got into tech or many other things I've done in my life, because of the profile of my business career, it's harder for me to kind of go into new spaces and do what I naturally want to do. To be very frank, I I don't know if I've ever felt the combination of, of gratitude and feeling humble and at the same token, a sense of responsibility of giving this talk today. Because, much like the way I entered into the tech space or the wine space or other things that I've done, I just wanna learn, right? I, 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 there's a lot, you know, I'm doing a lot of listening. The reason I teamed up with Josh Rahman and the rest of Green Street is, I didn't wanna come into this space and think that I knew everything or things of that nature. I wanna take it nice and slow and pay attention. Being underestimated and misunderstood is a massive business advantage. There's a lot of people in this room that are so desperate for acceptance of like this is real and all these kind of things like this is gonna be spending so much time trying to convince somebody of the legitimacy or the seniority or the sophistication of the space without realizing that they should be spending 100% of their time on the end consumer and building their advantage the leverage and preference of the majority of the people in this room would actually be for people coming into the space to dramatically slow down, not speed up. For all the good that dollars and all these other things come out, the more time that you have planting your flag and establishing your brand and building a relationship with the end consumer, the more leverage you have. Trying to convince people that are no people is a waste of time. And I think that's just something some of you need to hear because that no person for a lot of you is your fucking mom. (laughs) That no person is that your brother that you respect or your homie or your sibling. So just be very thoughtful of who you try to convince this is real because I think that's a lot of wasted energy in early times. Number two, you need to be thoughtful of all the new people that are coming in. If you play it right for yourself, it can be the most remarkable thing. But as a collective, these very early days are super important. This is inevitable at scale. This is, watching this makes me laugh because this is exactly what the rooms look at. This is actually way more. This is more, even though it's just, these days for me, a small room. You know, this is way more faces than the ones that I saw in the tech space. And a lot of these faces went on to become the founders of Uber and Zucks and the founders of Instagram and things of that nature. So, a couple things. Number one, if you are fortunate enough to be smart enough and that's the only word I can think of. If you are fortunate enough to be smart enough to be in this fucking room right now, please do not do what so many of my homies from tech in 2006, seven, and eight do to me, which is reminisce and are sad that they did not take full advantage of their pole position in where the world was going. The biggest mistake that so many of you will do today is not network with other people at this place. 
what I really am passionate about is for people in this room to understand how many options we do have. If you're in this space, even if you're a brand or if you're a grower, your permission to be the media company of this space is there, AKA every fucking person in this room needs to start thinking about their podcast yesterday. Every single person in this room needs to be thinking about writing a white paper and putting it on LinkedIn yesterday. Everybody here has to shift from crying, and that's what a lot of you are doing. Wah, wah, Instagram and Facebook and Google aren't taking my money. Nobody gives a fuck about your tears. Stop crying about what you can't do and start figuring out what you can do. You can be dominating Instagram, spend the fucking 900 hours building out an influencer network so they can fucking do posts and give you cosigns. You could. You could start a YouTube vlog and document the journey of building your business in a space along the way. I wish I could watch Zuck's fucking vlog and how he built Facebook, you know, if he was doing this 10 years ago. God forbid, aka God willing, your company explodes, that vlog of how you made it is gonna be watched for the next 50 fucking years in perpetuity. You can do a ton of shit, but we have to shift our marketing mindset in this space from being advertisers to being media companies. We have to produce content. You have to produce content. So I implore you to take advantage of this remarkable moment in your industry where it's not a baby, but it hasn't even started. And I highly recommend you understand how early platforms and industries start. The ROI is in the fucking people. The ROI is in the fucking people. I promise you right now, everybody is watching how you're navigating right now. Everybody is watching. And there's a lot of you, and I fucking was in the hall for four minutes. And there's a lot of you, unfortunately, getting seduced by the short-term ROI and finances in the system, and everybody knows it. And you will lose. Three of you will get through and make that trade, that's fine. We'll never see you again. But most of you will have a scarlet letter for trying to take from it instead of giving to it. Look, if you make a podcast called 43-year-old mom, that's literally the name of it, and you're targeting housewives and high net worth individuals who are gonna be in the edible space because that's who you're targeting, you've gotta really just go after your, con- your target audience with content that they'll consume. That's always been the case. But the reason I said one, two, and three is patience is because that's what it's gonna take. There's still a fucking massive stigma. Go fucking read the first 15 years of prohibition. You know what the biggest, scariest things in the world are? Having too little and having too much. When you're poor as fuck and on welfare, you don't think the trust fund baby who's got 100 mils got it bad, you think that's the greatest. What you don't realize is that kid is always gonna be told that he never made it and he's got a drug problem and fucked up and on meds and at the psychiatrist because his game is broken before he even started. The bottom line is, my dear, everybody's got fucking problems too because when it's yours, it's yours. And so I navigate happy because I'm just grateful for what I have and other people have more, other people have less. When I had a whole lot less, I was happy with the fuck I had and I just every day recognize that if I'm in my own head and realize that everybody's got their own shit too, then I don't spend time complaining and dwelling, I spend time on doing. This is forever. You have made a decision to be in an industry that will be over-regulated for the rest of your life. I promise you that. And that's super okay. I did the first 20 years of my business life in a super regulated business. But it still sucks compared to not regulated businesses. Like, I don't know what else to tell you. And so, much like the admiration I have for Travis, I could have never built Uber. Because Travis had a DNA that was good at fighting City Hall. I'm scared of City Hall. That's just my DNA. So, I think everybody here has to make a decision for them if they have the, must, you know, the muscles, memory, and the stomach to deal with the ebbs and flows of things. The toughest thing, and anybody will know this, the number one toughest thing to me in life is not having little, because you don't know. It's having little, getting something, getting a lot, and then losing it. People going backwards just struggle. And I think the toughest thing in a regulated business is, cool, they open up Illinois, a couple people here have Chicago roots or they move, they go and they crush it, they saw what happened in Cali, they went and did it like they fucking kill it and then for some reason seven years later they re-regulate it and it's gone. Tough. That is what you're signing up for 
and I think the better, kind of like nobody gives a fuck about your feelings, right? The, the quicker you understand this is gonna be regulated in perpetuity, then you can start really starting to think about how you navigate and how you go about it. So I wish you guys the best. I'm so grateful that I was able to give this talk at this time. It means a lot to me. I'm super excited to get to know the majority of you over the next two or three decades and I wish you great health and great success. Thank you so much. <laughs>